Today, I want to share with you what is the best time to start your freight broker or freight agency business. So over the last few years, we've been through a lot of financial economic turbulence. You know, things were going really well, and then we had COVID and things tanked. And then things started to recover from COVID. And now we've got inflation and we've got some other issues going on that are causing a little bit of, of an economic downturn. So the question is, when is the best time to start your freight broker or freight agency business? So is it during an economic boom? Well, when you have an economic boom and things are going up rapidly, what you find in the freight industry is you have a lot of freight, but you can't find trucks mm. because capacity has been consumed by all of the excess freight. When you have more loads than you have trucks, it causes rates to go up and it makes your job a little harder to source trucks. So that's what it looks like when you have an economic upturn, right? When you have an economic boom. Now, let's think about when you have an economic downturn or what some people will call a recession, okay? So in a recession, the volume of freight goes down, but the availability of trucks goes up. So when you do have a load, it's typically easier to cover because there's capacity in the marketplace. So as you can see, there are challenges associated with both situations, right? There are unique and different challenges for any economic climate. So what I want you to understand is this. The fact is there is no perfect time to start your freight broker, freight agent business. There is no best time to become a freight broker or a freight agent. What you have to understand is as an entrepreneur, as a freight broker, as a freight agent, you have to learn how to thrive in any economic climate. Because the fact is, if you're going to be in business for 10 or 20 years, you're going to see the economy is very cyclical. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. It's boom, it's bust. It's boom, it's bust. You're going to have to learn how to adapt in those situations. You're going to have to learn how to navigate those situations. So rather than me trying to tell you that when the best time to become a freight broker is, what I want to share with you today is I want to share with you six fundamental principles that you can use to thrive in any economic condition as a freight broker or freight agent. Okay, so that's what I'm going to share with you today. So number one on the list, always be on the lookout for talent. Always be on the lookout for top talent, for good, solid talent, okay? But you have to balance that with don't try to grow too fast or hire the wrong person. Hiring the wrong person or trying to grow too fast can actually stunt your growth. But at the same time, you always have to be on the lookout for good talent. Because talent is what really allows you to grow. It's a critical part of every business, talent. So what I want you to understand is when there's an economic boom, it's very challenging to find talent because most of that talent has been consumed and hired. But in an economic downturn, like we're sitting in right now where the economy is going down, this is when talent becomes more readily available. So this is a great time for you to find top talent to help you grow your company throughout the recession and then to springboard yourself into success when things start to take an economic upturn again, which they will as they always do. Number two, I've said this a million times, niche down. Riches are in niches. Do not try to be everything to everybody. That is a surefire way to fail. What I want you to understand is don't be a generalist. It's better to become an expert in something than a, just a generalist in anything, right? If you're going to focus in on the steel industry, become an expert about the steel industry. You're going to focus on the produce industry, become an expert in the produce industry. If you're going to focus in on heavy haul or you're going to focus in on, on import export or whatever, intermodal or whatever niche you're going to get into, become an expert. Now, an expert is someone, by definition, the definition that I like to say, an expert is someone who's one chapter ahead of the person that they're talking to, to their prospect or to their customer. 
you know more than most of the market and you know more than what you're trying than who you're entertaining so that takes a little bit of research that takes a little bit of time that takes a little bit of experience but what you have to understand is by niching down you can make yourself way more valuable and you're going to stand out from the crowd because people love to talk to experts they don't like to talk to salespeople. So you have to understand, very, very important that you niche down. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna be isolated to that niche forever. You can always expand into other niches, but I've talked about how you do that strategically. Number three, get very close to your customers. Get very, very close to your customers. You have to listen to your customers. Most people in the freight brokerage, freight industry, you know, trucking logistics industry, are very transactionally focused. They're not based, they don't focus on relationships. What you have to do is you have to focus on relationships over transactions. I know that it's the transactions that pay the bills. I know you gotta get the invoices out. I know you gotta move the loads. I know you gotta move shipments. I know that's how you pay your bills. But the way to do that is to focus on relationships. So if you're in a situation where your customer is trying to keep you at arm's length via email, you need to figure out a way to get on the phone. If you're talking to them on the phone, then you need to figure out a way to meet them face to face. Get as close as you can to your customers. And what I mean by that is not sitting there always begging for freight, but truly understanding their business, right? You have to become viewed as more of a strategic partner and a trusted advisor than just another freight jockey. And that takes time. But it takes an investment on you to invest in that relationship. When you're always focused on transactions, that makes you a freight jockey. When you're focused on the relationship and you're focused on solving their problems and you're focused on really helping and providing value to the shipper, that's when you become a trusted resource. That's when you become more than just another freight jockey who's out there trying to find trucks for them, okay? Number four, get very close to your core carriers. The same thing applies to carriers as applies to customers. You have to understand, as a freight broker, you really have a couple of customers. One customer is your shipper, but you also have another major stakeholder, which is your, your carriers. Because you can have all the shipments in the world, but without trucks, you're not going anywhere. You're not making any money, and you'll go out of business fast. So you have to get very close to your care core carriers and the exact sort of, sort of thing. You have to focus on becoming a partner and not just another freight broker who's out there trying to beg for trucks. When you start focusing on relationships over transactions, whether that be with carriers or with customers, you're going to start to see a major difference in the type of opportunities that you will have on both sides of the coin. So number five, track manage, and most importantly, understand some of the key financial metrics that are associated with your business. You have to track revenue. You have to track expenses. You have to track cash flow. You've got to track net income. You've got to track some of these core fundamental KPIs, key performance indicators, and you have to not only track them, but you have to understand them. Now, for most of you, that probably scares the shit out of you because you're not a financial wizard. You're not an accountant. You're not a bookkeeper. Well, guess what? Neither am I. I hate counting beans. I don't like doing the accounting. So I outsource my accounting. I always have. I've had an accountant. I've got bookkeepers. I've got people who take care of that for me, but it's always tracked. It's always managed. And I'm always looking at it at least, if not on a daily basis, a weekly basis but it's definitely something that's very important for every entrepreneur, all right? Number six, learn how to adapt to changing market conditions, but don't get caught up chasing every trendy idea, right, that you see on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok, right? There's all kinds of people out there pitching their wares and telling you what's the next best greatest way to build a business or to get customers or to market your business or whatever the case may be. Don't get caught up in every, you know, trend that's out there. What you have to understand, you know, whether that be, you know, you're going to have one person telling you that you need to be doing Facebook ads. You're going to have another person telling you, you need to start a YouTube channel. You're going to have another person telling you, you need to start a podcast. 
You're going to have another person telling you that you should go out and do flyers on door-to-door -door flyers. You're going to have other people that are going to say, hey, you need to hire agents. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You have to figure out your strategy and then you have to execute. What you have to understand is strategy is really important. But what you have to understand, what's even more important is execution. So don't get distracted. Make sure you stay focused. But you do need to learn how to adapt because as things change, when the economic, when there's an economic upturn, your strategy is going to have to change. You're going to have to adapt. The same thing goes when the economy turn takes a downturn or goes into a recession. You're going to have to adapt. That requires you to number one, recognize the change, and then to adapt your strategies along the way. You have to have winning strategies for every economic conditions. Now, I can't sit here and give you every one of those strategies today, but I've shared a lot of those strategies on my YouTube channel over the years. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you need some help, you need a guide, you need someone to translate all the stuff that's on Google and YouTube and put it into one very actionable course that can help you get started and grow a very successful freight broker business today. Check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com, trained over 10,000 students, been in business over a decade, and we have a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee if for any reason uh, you're not happy with the training. Again, that it's pretty rare that that happens, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you subscribe, like, share the stream. Again, join me every week for another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live.